Hello, everybody. Welcome to a very unorganised Rangers Rabble podcast, your Monday night show, which will soon hopefully be returning back to a phone in because I know that that's what everybody wants and that's what I'm desperately, desperately trying to do. I know I say it every week, um, but believe me, it is firmly on the agenda. So, yeah, hello, everybody. Welcome. Um, give the show a like and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube and a share and a follow on uh, Facebook and Twitter, do the retweet thing and, and all that that good stuff. I hope you're all well. Um, I am joined by uh, the man who probably has the worst internet since me about six months ago, uh, Wolf Marshall. Wolf, how are you? Just kidding. I'm fine, Martin. The weather, the Wi-Fi's, the Wi-Fi's weather dependent and up here the weather's no great, so the Wi-Fi's a wee bit dodgy, but we'll get there. We shall get there. We shall. The joy, Care, my friend. How the, are you? The joys, the joys of living where I love it. <laughs> I'm more bad, Martin, yourself. I, I, I was hoping you would go on a wee kind of, you know, a wee 30 second. I am well, Martin. I'm doing really well. But, you know, you just, just as usual, you send it straight back to me. Aye, I know. That's, that's right. A, that's the best way. You're back to the host. Aye, that's, that's a sign of things to come tonight, isn't it? Uh, Mark, um, you're looking resplendent, my friend. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's, it, I'm, I'm actually doing worse than I look, to be fair. I'm, I'm way back to work tomorrow, so I'm all right. I've got the back to work fear. But apart from that, I'm happy to be here with you guys. You love your new tracky top, Mark. You've just been looking through your wardrobe. Say that again? Is that a new tracky top? You've been just looking through your wardrobe? I was just, I was, I was just talking to Wolf about it. It's, it's one of these holy grail ones. I've been trying to get it for years, years and years and years. And I've managed to get it, and I'm over the moon. It's one of my holy grails. There's this, and the, the Boca Juniors 85 one, or 81. It's either 81 or 85 one. It's the other two Adidas originals that I'm trying to get. I've managed to get this one, so I'm over the moon, mate. Um, trainers to match as well. Got to have trainers to match. But, I, yeah, I'm over the moon, mate. But very nice, yes. It's a proper, Please. proper midlife crisis tracky tap, isn't it? Oh, it's just, uh, it's, all, it's, all about, it's all about style. You can't buy it, you know what I mean? You've either you got it, you've no got it, Mark. You've either got it, you've no got it. It's Some people, you, can, you, can, you can fly a couple of grand's worth of gear on something, it'll still look like a paraffin lamp. You know what well, I mean? Do, 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 do you know what? Nicholas Moore hits it right in the Vicky Pollard would love that, that. Um, yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, see if she can get me get me the Boca Junior one. I'll be over the moon. Uh, you that one. JD's asking, what's next, Mark? A Harley? <laughs> <laughs> Are you still with the cat? You've done that. Been there, done that. Oh, I, I, I could absolutely imagine. Right, okay, we've got quite a bit to discuss. Um, Obviously, we had our reaction to the Rafe Rovers game. We'll probably discuss that in a wee bit of detail. But I think the biggest thing care to come from that was the manager's very honest post-match interview. Um, you could, I think, if you watch it closely, you could actually see Ali going, mm, mm, right, stop, stop, stop talking. And I think even after he'd finished, I think the the women presenter, who's clearly a supporter of a team in Glasgow that doesn't play in blue, um, wanted to carry on the conversation. And I think Ali's cut her off as well. But you know, he mentioned Alfredo. Yeah. Um, he did. He did also mention that he'd spoke to Kent and Jack about new contracts, but not Alfie. He wants to see more from him. Um, whether that means on the pitch and training, whatever. Um, is that a massive, massive sign, do you think, that Alfie will not be with us next season? Listen, I heard the start of the season, he wasn't going to be here next season uh, just because he wanted to go and play in a Spanish-speaking country. So, listen, Alfie doesn't know anything. We don't know Alfie anything. He's been here for a while. I might have went steel in Glasgow. He might want to try somewhere else. It probably has went steel both ways. People need a change. He needs a change. To me, it doesn't really, it doesn't bother me. If Alfie goes elsewhere, good luck to him. But I do think he needs a change. And I do think we need a change. He's been here a long time and you can tell the manager, yeah, he wants Ryan Jack to stay and Ryan Kent to stay. And if Alfie goes, like I said, a man ago, good luck to him. He doesn't know anything. We don't own him anything. Do you know something though, Wolf? It could also be a wee bit of a kind of shot in the arm from the manager to Alfie to say, look, you need to step step up. If you want to be here, show me you want to be here. It could be that, but I agree with Ken. I don't think Alfie wants to be here. I think Alfie's made his mind up that he's that he wants to go. I mean, as we touched on last week, I mean, Alfie's been away 
from Spanish speaking countries, if you like, for six years with us. He was two years in uh, Scandinavia before that. You know what I mean? So it's a long time for a foreign player to be away from a country that speaks the language he was brought up to speak. So if he did go somewhere, because you, you would expect him to go somewhere like Spain if he didn't go back to South America, you know, because he's not, he speaks English better than he makes out. But hmm. given the length of time he's been here, he really, he should be fluent by now. If he was that, he bothered, probably if he is was that well, bothered about, about it. He, he will be fluent, Wolf, but I don't blame the guy for not coming out and saying that he does speak it. Why would you want to speak to the press in this country? Oh yeah, I get, I get that, but it's, you know what I mean. He's, he's, you might be right. He maybe, he maybe is fluent. He doesn't, he doesn't seem that that bo- that bothered about, you know, about speaking about speaking the language we get about, about staying here. So, as Kerr says, we don't owe him, and he doesn't owe us anything. He's been here six years. He's a top European goal scorer. He'll probably stay that way for a long, long time because it's, unless McCoy comes out of retirement, then <laughs> he'll, he'll be staying the, the top goal scorer, I think, in Europe. You know, he's. Been a good million pounds worth, you know. Um, it'll take it. It'll take a hell of a lot more than that to replace him. To be perfectly honest, but he's let him so many times as well. So I would just say let him go. I mean, it's, it is quite telling that the manager said, "Look, he's he's already spoke. He's already told Ryan Jack he wants to wants him to stay. He's already he's obviously on record a few times and said he wants Ryan Kent to stay. But he's never said that about Morelos. So it might be a shot across his bows to get him playing for the rest of the season, but." I mean, the civil thing might be through. We don't know because the manager said he hasn't spoken to him about it. So, which was a strange, which was, which was, I'll try that again. Which was, which, which was strange, Wolf, because you would, you would think that if there was any sort of truth to the rumor, um, that you know the club would know, and not unless, not unless the manager's just keeping that tight lip. Well, I mean, the the, you, the club's obviously seen the rumor. The manager's obviously seen the rumor. Some surely. Somebody would just ask, ask, ask Alfie, look, is there any truth in this? Have you spoke to him? You know, have you signed a deal? He might not have spoke to him. You know what I mean? He might have pretended he can't speak English and just ignored the question. I don't know. But you would think somebody would have at least, somebody would at least have asked him, you know, is there any truth in this? Because it was all, I mean, it was all over the place at the weekend that he, that he signed the contract with Seville because it came out of Spain. So I think the manager yeah. maybe just trying to be, which isn't really like him. Yeah, it, it came out off of a, a, a Twitter page, Mark. Um, whether that's a reliable page or not, I don't know. I didn't really look into it that deeply. I just I just jumped on what everybody on, on social media was talking about because, Mark, as we do know, everything on social media is true. <laughs> yeah. Well, to be fair, like, you've just, you've just kind of <clears throat> hit the nail on the head there. I don't think any of us have really chased it up to find out if it's true or if it's if it's not true or looked into it in any great depth because I think that um, Alfie's not been here for 18 months. To be perfectly honest, he's already away. Um, the fact that none of us are really overly, overly panicking or, or fussed about it, um, I think probably tells tells a story in itself that, that we're not overly bothered. I mean, he's been a great servant, don't get me wrong, but I think that... Um, we talk about the manager wanting them to stay and wanting other players to stay. How do you, how do you how do you justify giving him more money in another four year? You can't he really, can you? It's no Ryan Jack. There's an argument for Jack. There's definitely an argument for Kent. Kent brings so much to the team. Um, moving forward as well, I think he's still got his best years ahead of him. So for me, Kent, eh, Kent, sorry, Morelos has not done enough really to justify him. Getting a contract, um, attitude wise, um, playing wise, and it kind of, kind of almost looks as if feels that kind of end his tether with him anyway. So I think that probably this last kind of rumours, maybe the the final nail in the coffin for him. I think, um, I think it's just a case of look, we can He's probably wanting thirty five grand or whatever it is a week, and Bill's like, oh, look, we can't justify even even entertaining a rise. Never mind giving them that kind of money, so... Uh, do, you know what, do you know what, just to take that point, Mark, right, and kind of, look, there's a, quite a lot of comments coming in, as you can imagine, Kerr, right, so CGM, I actually think it will be a massive relief for Bill just to admit what we all knew, Morelos is finished. I don't think Morelos is finished, I just don't think his heart's at Rangers anymore. I think it's it's, it's pure and simple that. Um, and, and James uh, Dalrymple, channel member, 449 Super Chat, thank you very much. James, um, he's been a great player, but can't wait for a new striker. That seems to be the feeling amongst the support care. 
that, you know, we, we can talk about Ryan Jack and we can talk about Ryan Kent and we will in a second, but when it comes to Alfie, like two or three years ago, this would have been inconceivable. Two or three years ago, we are knocking back £16 million bids for this guy. Um, so he's fallen that far that I don't really think is what Wolf and Mark have both kind of said. I don't really think we're that bored that he's leaving. If he does. Well, I think it's not so much from the board. I just think it's time for a change. I just think we've had better players than Alfie at Rangers. It's left and we've moved on. So I just think he's he drew a change. We are due a change. We need to build for future. And that does include Morelos, I'm afraid. And that's as simple as that. He goes on to pastures new and me, bring somebody else in and move forward. It's it's not difficult. Let him go. Let him go away. I mean, he doesn't have to inform the club if he signs with somebody. He's going to be, he'll no. do it with the free agents, so he can do whatever he likes. Michael Beale said that. He can talk to whoever he likes because it's you know, he doesn't need permission anymore. So let him go on. Good luck to him, but we'll bring in somebody else. Like I said, Jella, Martin, I'll let him burn over there next season. <laughs> no, he won't. No, he won't. <laughs> don't even go there, Kia. Me and you are on very shaky ground as it is. So please don't go there. Um, well, I don't like to speak about things like this, Will, when nothing's happened yet, because look, for all we know, um, Morelos could sign a new contract, he could be here next season, this could be all smoke and mirrors, we just don't know. Um, in fact, do you know what, I'm going to change the question completely, because I've actually remembered what I was supposed to ask here, so I'm going to ask you, Will. Mark talked there about Alfie, you know, maybe saying, I want 35 or I want 40, I want to be the top, I want to be amongst the top earners at the club, right? Putting that to one side for a second... Does Alfie deserve a new contract at all, regardless of how much we're going to no. pay him per week? No, no, not not for the amount of times he's let us down. I mean, he's not his numbers this season haven't been haven't been fantastic. I mean, what was it? My manager said seven seven in the last fourteen or something. That, that's not great for a, a centre forward at Rangers. The amount of chances we make the teams that we play. He's. I mean, divisive is the wrong word, but he's he's caused he's caused a few problems. I mean, I know it's going back a bit, but he's his discipline record wasn't great. He's coming back late from international duty, all that sort of stuff. His fitness, his weight issues, all that kind of stuff. I just as Kerr as Kerr said, we've we've had a good we've had a good turnout of him. He's done as well. He doesn't know us. We don't know him. So I would just the best thing for for all parties. I think just to, just to cut ties. See, thanks very much, Alfie. You're welcome back anytime. But just go and move your career on because you're you're stagnating here. So I don't I don't even think I don't even think we'll be offering them a contract. We certainly shouldn't be offering them better terms than he's on. Right, um, I'm going to park this chat for two seconds, right? Because there's been quite a few comments, um, quite a few comments in the comments about this specific thing. It wasn't really something that I wanted to touch on too much, Mark, because it's an ongoing situation. I don't really, I know there are apples on Instagram, but I'm terrible with Instagram. I don't really know how to work it. I don't go on it much. Um, but um, and Namdi Offerbore, Namdi Offerbore has obviously took to Instagram. I, I believe now, I think the posts have been deleted. Um, and I won't read them out, but I think most of us watching know exactly what um, the comments were. Don't know who they were directed at. It could have been somebody at Rangers. It could have been somebody outside Rangers. It could have been somebody within the board. I don't know who they were directed at. Um, but again, that is a guy who has had absolutely zero luck. And he's right in terms of, we haven't heard from this guy. We don't know. We have never been told once what's going on. And the boy is clearly, clearly frustrated. Well, you can understand why he's frustrated, can't you? I mean, it's he's a footballer. All you want to do is play football. Um, and... <sighs> There's kind of a couple of ways you can look at it. I mean, my initial, when I read it and I seen it, my initial thing was, pardon my friends, but who the fuck does he think he is? We've been paying his wages for two years and trying to look after him. And the more I kind of digested it a wee bit, the other thing I looked at was trying to trying to read between the lines a wee bit and say, maybe, maybe the medical staff are saying, do you know what? We are not want to take the risk with this boy. Because if this boy falls down and, heaven forbid, passes away or, or has a serious, serious um, uh, kind of cardiac arrest or something like that on the park, and they knew, obviously, the condition and we've let him go out and play, so maybe they're saying, well, look, we're not taking the, we're not, we're not taking the risk in playing this boy. 
which which might be the which might be the frustration for him rather than actually being something wrong with them and saying that you physically cannot play. Maybe they're they're taking it from like a kind of corporate point of view and saying, Do you know what? Maybe it's not worth a risk playing this boy. And maybe that's what the dig was about. So I know that well I'm I'm putting two and two together and making eighteen, but I just it seems strange that all of a sudden two years down the line we've no heard anything about it and that obviously his frustration's boiled over and he's stuck that on it. As I said, my initial reaction was I've been paying this boy's wages for the last two years and, and, and trying to look after him. And I dare say, with all his medical bills have been covered, every kind of test he's went for has been top notch. He's probably went and seen specialists all over Europe. And and for him to turn around and go, hold on a minute, mismanagement and, and stuff. So, as I said, there's, there's definitely a lot more to it than just him being a wee bit pissed off. But the fact that I think Rangers Football Club. Instagram uh, stopped following him and he stopped following Rangers Instagram tells a story but as I said there's obviously something really really wrong here and um, we might never ever get to the bottom of it I think I, I think we probably will care in terms of uh, once off a ball leaves a football club if he's if he's as angry as what obviously it came across in those posts as soon as his contract's no longer with Rangers, he can say exact anything he wants, as long as it's obviously the truth. Um, it, like Mark says, but it's just strange that, you know, we haven't heard anything and all of a sudden, you know, um, this Instagram post just pops up. I mean, I mean, at the end of the day, if he's got a serious heart, a heart condition of any kind, a serious or not, I mean, didn't, Rangers don't have to tell us anything either, does he? I mean, I can, I mean I've got a heart condition myself and I go to three different hospitals and information sometimes I receive contradictable it's like you're getting one thing for one consultant and another consultant is telling you the total opposite so it does confuse you at times for the boy it could be the same but on his contract situation he'll be insured mm-hmm. Rangers don't have to pay all that through wages that'll be insured as well so it digs either at Rangers or it digs at the medical department but until we know the full story we can't really comment on him or the club because we don't know but then the day we signed him so in Bournemouth, let him go. So, and you can see, I don't know, I don't know, Mike, I could be wrong here, but you can't really hide a heart condition unless it was undetected. And sometimes that happens to athletes uh, in any kind of sport, it goes undetected for everyone. And look at Aguero when he joined Barcelona, they detected something, didn't they? After spending all these seasons at Man City. So things can go undetected. But until we know the full story, I don't really want to comment on it because if he has given me any, any medical condition, then I'll just say good luck to him because... Being that side it myself, I know what it's like having a medical condition, it's no great. So I wish them all the best. But I hope Rangers do come out and tell us, but in the day they don't have to and keep it behind closed doors because in the day it's their business. They don't have to. Well, if they don't have to come out and tell us. Um and, and do you know what? Care's absolutely right. Without knowing any aspect of what's going on, it's a really, really difficult subject. Um, to speak about all I can probably say, Wolf, is that I hope that regardless of what happens in his time at Rangers, that he gets over whatever it is that, that seems to be the issue and he gets back to playing some kind of football. Yeah, 100%. Even if he doesn't get back to playing football, I just hope he manages to, they manage to find out what the problem is, either fix it if they can or stabilise it and so that he can you know, he, he can live a long, and, a long and healthy life. I mean... I don't think I don't think his post particularly at the time I first saw him I thought Oof, something something's going on with our medical team, but then I thought about it, and it probably isn't our medical team that's looking after him, because they're obviously I wouldn't imagine we've got very many cardiac specialists on the on the books at Ibrox, so it'll be cardiac specialists somewhere, and to be honest, the um, the man he owes owes our owes whoever did his medical arrangements owes him probably possibly owes that that person or that group of people's life because they found the problem. I mean, before he signed for us, he'd, he'd, done, a, he'd done a whole a half season on loan at, I think it was at Wickham he was at on loan from Bournemouth before he came to us, after he signed his pre-contract and he did, he played for them almost every week. Then came to us because he'd signed the pre-contract and that's when they found the heart condition. So, you, you could argue that if they hadn't found it and he kept playing, who knows what might have happened? You know, but we can just wish the, wish the guy all the best and Hopefully we do we do find out how serious it is. Not, they won't tell us specifically what the issue is because that's none of our business. That's the guy's own personal 
as Kerr says it's his own personal medical medical um, stuff. So we've got no we've got no right to know that. We've got no need to know that. But as long as he gets the best medical help that he can, and he, if he has a future in football, if it's with us, great. If it's not with us, then fair enough. But I mean, I noticed that. Um, the, the, apparently there's been some posts on his periodical posts on his Instagram calling him a wage thief and and all this sort of stuff and Rangers and Tenbrook's called that's nonsense people posting that that's that's ridiculous I mean the guy's got a serious health condition that he was lucky that somebody spotted you know and hopefully as I say hopefully they can, they can either resolve it like they did with Conor Gold's condition before he came to us or they can stabilise it and the guy can go on and live, live his life Press the wrong button. There you go. Um, yeah, listen, I 100% agree. People saying he's a wage thief, that's just mental. That's just nuts, Mark. How can you come out and say that about any football player? Um, they've signed a contract with a club and then they've, they've found then a, a whatever it is they've found and he can't play. Um, he's in by no means and way a wage thief in the slightest. Talk like that. It's just nuts. Yes. It's just, to be fair, they kind of comments are out of order, aren't they? A young boy, all he wants to do is play football through no fault of his own. Um, he's not able to do it, and I mean, you can imagine if, if, if we did it, couldn't couldn't go to our work, we wouldn't be we wouldn't be uh, kicking ourselves. But if you're a professional footballer, all you want to do is play football, especially a young boy. Um, world at his feet, just signed for a big, massive club, looking forward to playing in Europe and stuff like that, and all of a sudden. You're told, do you know what? You kind of kick a ball, and just to to reiterate the sentiments of the guys there, um, just hope hope he, he stays healthy. I, I couldn't care less. I mean, I'd I'd like him to play football again, but I'm not really caring as as long as the boy's healthy and uh, he lives a he lives a happy life. Then that's really all we can we can uh, we can ask for. But call my wage thief, thanks. Wrong in so many levels. Um, to say the young boy, all he wants to do is play football. So, yeah, it's not his fault. No, no, it is not. Um, I just want to pick up on <coughs> Timothy Sharp's channel member. Uh, Martin will be when he goes full-time with the rabble. When I go full-time with the rabble, I would have less money and I, and I still won't be able to afford a haircut. So, uh, but yeah, talk uh, talk about wage fees. There's, there's, there's only one or two. There's, there's, sorry, there's not only. But there's one or two wage fees at Rangers. And let me tell you, off a board isn't one of them. And I think we all know who I'm talking about. Yeah. But who we might come on to talk about a wee bit later. It's one of Kerr's best pals. That That's a big hint. Definitely one of Kerr's best pals. <laughs> Martin, that's, that's not a Union Bears t-shirt you're wearing there, is it? No, it is a Nirvana t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> that went right over your head, didn't it? I just, I, I just, I'm, I'm not getting drawn into that conversation, even though it's in the title and we've all talked about it. But I'll, I'll leave that for later. Um, just going, just going back to what we first started discussing here. Um, you know, Alfredo and, and that. Like you say, the manager mentioned Ryan Kent and Ryan Jack. If we can start with Kent, um, I'll ask you the same question that I asked Wolf. Regardless of how much it is per week or whatever the new terms are, um. Does Ryan Kent deserve a new contract at Rangers? Everybody, everybody will have their own opinion, but I think he does. But I'm asking for yours. I'm, I'm care about everybody else. I'm, I'm asking you. Not everybody I'm, else care. Just you. Your opinion. Don't start with your politician nonsense. Does Ryan Kent deserve a new contract? Scott Kerr, yes or no, and give me a detailed podcast professional answer. Yes, I, yes, Martin, he does deserve a new contract, in my opinion. Why? I think you're wrong. Why? That's a terrible, that's shocking. <laughs> but I just think I just think he offers us something that we've not got, and I think we better put us around about him in a different system. We'll see the best of him, like Mark said previously. His best years are still ahead of him, but I think even if he signed an hard deal and he get another season out of him, and he done really well, we could sell make some money, if not, I think he can stay and be a success with us because I think we know what he's got. Yeah, you can look at his maybe his goals or his uh, assists and stuff like that. But when you look at the stats and the XG stuff people talk about, he was always one of the highest in that. But you, people criticise him. I just think we. Yeah, I think since Bills came back in, Ryan's proven that he's when he plays in a system that he enjoys, he's an asset to the team, and I think he deserves a new contract. And I think that's why Michael Bill keeps saying it because Michael Bill sees him. Like one of the players' first names in his team sheet. That's why he wants him to stay. I know. I was being I was being slightly facetious, Sir Mark. Right. 
Um, I, I think it's 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 very very easy to just look at his goals and assists, which you which you should get a lot more of, right? Um, but there seems to be a connection between Kent and the manager. Um, they obviously get on. The manager's known him for a long, long time. Um, so I think it would, he, would, he would only be an asset to us going forward, Ryan Kent. Would he not? I, I get he's not. People compare him to the other side with Jota and Abada and their numbers and stuff like that. But Ryan Kent offers us so much on the park, does he not? Yeah. I, uh, Ryan Kent, no matter, no matter if he's having a different form, he always tries. Uh, 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 but he's, he's an amazing talent, absolute brilliant talent. Some of the things that he does with the ball is second to none. Uh, I think that what he, what he brings to our, our team is, for me, priceless. And, and I think that if he signs a new contract, he then becomes a sellable asset. Because I think he's, he's, well, he's well thought of in a lot of different leagues. I.e. down south, he's well thought of. And I think Germany as well, he's really well thought of there. So... I think it's a no-brainer. He, he signed Kent up. I think um, his best years, again, are ahead of him. Um, he's still a young man. He knows this club inside out. And, and I think I think out of all the ones that are that we're talking about that are out of contract, I think that probably he'd be the biggest miss. Um, and I think that he would be one of those players that you wouldn't really realise how big a miss he is until he's not there. And I think would be, if he goes... Which I, which I don't think he will, but I think if, if he does go, I think next season we'll be crying out saying, "I wish, I wish uh, Kent was here because of what he brings to the to the side." Even just in work rate alone, it's um, mm. went through a wee spell where it, it wasn't. You could tell he wasn't happy. You could tell his body language wasn't right. Um, and since Bill's come back in, his work rate's back there. He's he's trying things. He's all over the park. He's demanding a ball again. Um, all right, sometimes it might not might not come off, but I think it's it's very very fine margins, especially with Kent. I think that um, Kent's uh, can, as I said, it's a fine line where Kent can be a a world beater if it clicks, and other times it can be a wee bit frustrating. But I think for it's a no brainer as far as I'm concerned. You give this boy another contract, I would make him one of the, one of the highest paid players at the, at the club, and uh, sign him up for another four year, hundred percent. Do you go along with that, Wolf? Is that making one of the highest paid players at the club? Or you, Mark used a, a, a term there, um, resellable asset. Do you think that's one of the main reasons that Rangers might be looking to maybe tie Kent down to a new deal? More so than, than maybe what he offers on the park. Do you think Rangers are maybe looking at it going, we want to recoup some of that seven million? Yeah, I'd like to think so. I mean, that's... I mean, it was... I said it to Ollong, we lo- lo- losing Alfredo for for nothing in the summer. It's a million pound we've lost. That's fine because he's we've had a good million pound out of him in the last six years. But uh, Ryan Kent cost us a lot of money, and I mean, Mark, you you were spot you were spot on that. Don't know how good he, we won't know how good he is until he's not here. I mean, you see you see how see how much we miss him when he's not in the team. We really really miss him when he's not in the team, and. The biggest problem with his game and the, the biggest problem most people have got with him are what 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 the, the kids these days call his numbers, his, his goals and his assists. But they can work on that. He's still a young lad. Well, young, he's mid mid early to mid twenties. He, he, he's still coach the things that he hasn't that he can't do. They're coachable. The stuff he does, you can't coach. The the trickery that he's got, you can't coach that. But the things, his finishing is dreadful. Right, his finishing is absolutely dreadful. Right, and his cross. I think. I think. So, sorry, can, I know this is going to be really difficult to cut in on you, Will, because you're behind on your on your your stream, right? But see that his finishing is dreadful. It's never going to change now, is it? It's. It, it, he's too old. He's too. If it was going to change by now, it would have changed. His his finishing is always going to be dreadful. Uh, but is it? But is it? Because it ha- I mean, we don't know if they've ever concentrated on his finishing. No, has, has any has, has any of coach actually must. said, look, Ryan? Of course they must have. But but really concentrated on it, so like treated him like a centre forward from that point of view. Say, so look, for an hour every day after training, you're just gonna hit balls into that goal, see how you get on. You know what I mean? That that's the only gripe I've got with him is his finishing's his finishing's awful. And if they can't sort his finishing, then he needs to get in his head that he doesn't take shots. Because I mean you can speak to Glenn Kamara, because Glenn Kamara doesn't shoot. So 
you know what I mean? Gets into shooting positions and passes the ball on, but, but Kent's, a, Kent's a more skillful player than Kamara, so he could lay it on for other people. That's my only great with Ryan Kent is his finish is awful, but to answer the question you originally asked, yes, I would sign him, and yes, it probably is to sell him on for a few quid in, a, in maybe a year, 18 months' time. Yeah, I just I don't see care how he's how he's finishing improves. There's, there's, there's no question in my mind that that's something that's been worked on because he's such an intelligent footballer. He creates oh, he creates so much space. He does so many good things on the park. His finishing is dreadful, and I, I genuinely don't see that improvement. Um, but this is this is something that a lot of fans are going to say. Um, CGM says it in the comments. Um, some fans seem to have Stockholm syndrome when it comes to Morelos and Kent. Um, neither of them produce the consistent numbers of goals and assists that we need to win leagues. Is that fair? It was your opinions, and it probably is to a point, but you've got to remember, we've not got hundreds of money. We have to be clever in the window, so there's players that you, you can say we can let go because we're not missing him as much as maybe the other player. And Ryan Kent's probably the other player. Michael Beale's that right. We can maybe replace Kent next season or maybe the next window if we can look about and be clever on the transfer market and see what's available maybe in a free agency or pre-contract maybe for next season. But you can't let 20 players go at one time. You can't. You have to be clever. So you'll probably look at other positions first and say we can maybe let him go, let him go. We've identified maybe a keeper, maybe another midfielder, maybe a striker. But there's others that part of what I keep. And we ran Kent and the team along with Campbell asking if you keep Tillman, you've got Tom Lawrence coming back. That's a formidable set of players going forward. So Ryan Kent's not the one you're always going to rely on because he gets double marked at times and when we're playing, but nobody else in the park can create. But if Campbell's in the park at the same time, Tillman's in the park at the same time, Lawrence is in the park at the same time, they might not be, but say they are, it gives the opposition more to think about rather than just in Ryan Kent. So it gives Kent more space. Yeah, his finishing should be better. Maybe he has to relax more. But if Ryan Kent was a top-class finisher, I mean, he'd be worth millions. But obviously, Ryan Kent's one of these guys who he's probably too good for our league, but he's not maybe good enough for other leagues. There's a lot of players in that bracket. And as long as we keep him, I mean, I know people across the city, they're players, but Jota's not the best finisher. He scores goals, but he misses a lot as well. So there's Labada. Labada's in and out that team line. I think that's how he's anchoring for a move. So don't always look. The grass isn't always greener. I think Ryan knows that. And I think some of the then you're supposed to realise we can't get rid of 14, 15 players and replace 14, 15 players in that window past in the summer window. So we have to be clever. So you keep your assets and Ryan gets an asset to me. That's why at this moment in time you keep them. I keep forgetting to hit that unmute button. <laughs> it's absolutely brutal. All right, okay, Mark. Um, well, I'll ask you, what does Ryan Kent bring um, to, to, our, to our team? Because it's not, it's not finishing. Um, I get the assists I, I, and I get to play in the park and listen, I think he should sign a new contract because I do think he's an excellent player I'm just trying to play a wee bit of devil's advocate right? so Mark, what does Ryan Kent bring that means that he should be rewarded with a new contract and obviously improved terms well, I mean the big thing Kerr's already said, they're creativity and it's the hardest thing especially when, you, when you're looking at 99.9% .9 of the teams we play against I mean, to look at the game on Sunday there, they, they had 11 players inside their box at one point. So, for for us to play against that week in, week out, you need people that, that can make things happen. You can, you, uh, Like uh, Kerr said there as well, constantly get two players marking them. Sometimes three at, uh, at the weekend there. Sometimes there was three players on them. So, for him, his movement and his creativity, even look, he's running. He's running power and stuff like that opens up pockets of space for other players to, to, to move into and, and obviously to try and create other things as well. So you can't really put a price in that. As I said, it's it's that whole, as I said, his work rate, his creativity. I think his crossing is brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Um, so for me, even even his de 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 defensive side of things as well, it tracks back, chases, harries, does a lot of the kind of ugly side of things as well, which no a lot of kind of winger type players are even interested in doing that. So for me, as I said, it's probably no what he brings, it's what you would lose if you take him out because you'll not really notice unless you sit and watch watch him 
a week in, week out, and sit and just just pay attention to what Kent does. So I say, ideally, if you're if you're at a game, just watch his movement, watch what he does, watch how he chases back, watch how he pulls, even his runs pulling two two players out of the way to to make space for a teammate. So you really can't put a price on that. To say that it's a it's a big big part of the game, and it's a part of the game that a lot of people don't really understand or, or recognise. So for me. As I said, that whole creativity, whether it be I'm just running, I'm just movement, or whether it's be the ball at his feet and committing players and trying to make things happen. So for me, that's a massive, massive thing, especially when you're playing against these low blocks week in, week out. It's, it's absolute torture. And you look to players like Kent that can actually make something happen, pull somebody out of position, make space for somebody else. So as I said, for me, you can't put a price on that. You really can't. As I said, he, he's one of the best in the league at doing that. From Kent to Jack Wolf. Now you can't argue about what Jack brings um, yeah. to the football team. Um, phenomenal player. We all seen the performance against Hibs. We know exactly what Jack brings. Um, of course, the only question with regards to a new contract, which we know the manager wants to go ahead and give Jack a new deal, and I've no doubt that Jack will go yes, please. Where they assign. Um, the, the only question, of course, with Jack is injuries, and can we keep him fit? Yeah, I mean, that's always been a problem with Ryan Jack. I mean, he's played, I think he's played something like 20 games this season, so it's not quite as bad as the picture we're trying to paint. Um, I mean, any new contract that he's offered for me should be a two-year deal, but the second year's dependent on appearances next season. Because if he can stay fit, he's an absolute asset to the football club. As I say, I'll be offering him a year, a year's option, depending on being fit enough to play in however many, however many games. Doesn't necessarily have to play in him because it's up to whether he gets selected or not, obviously. Um, but we all know what he brings. We're a much, much better team when, when Ryan Jack's in the team. I mean, I noticed I noticed that the um the last home league game when Jack had come back from injury, that within the first couple of minutes, Goldson went forward and Jack just stepped in and filled the gap. Nobody else does that. You know what I mean? He's, he's, his awareness of defenders going up going up and, and him needing to cover cover back is incredible. You know, he's he wins the ball, gives it gives it to guys that are better players, better football players than him to do stuff with it. He's he's an absolute. I mean, I I always I was talking to this with one of my pals the other day, and I always reference when he plays with Scotland. And I know we're not all Scotland fans, and that's fine. But I mean, when he the the, the last was it the last time he played for Scotland, which he should stop doing by the way, just to help his fitness. They were, they were drawn nil nil, took him off and get beat two nothing because they hardly lose a goal when he plays for them, just the way that he plays. You know, he's he's really really good. He's really good at. He's really good at shutting the door in the middle of the park. So for me, I'm not sure how we'd go about it, whether we can make it a clause in this contract, but we should be telling him that it's quite international football because his body's not up to the rigors of playing three games a week. For me. You know, so he needs to he needs he'll need he'll, he'll lead managed. whether that means that he, if he plays in a European game on a, on a Wednesday or a Thursday. He doesn't play at the weekend or he doesn't play the week before it. He's one of these players that can't really play weekend, midweek, weekend, midweek, weekend all the time because his body won't his body won't last. But I'd be I'd be offering him a new contract tomorrow. And as you say, I think he would sign it, no problem. No, listen, he, five pence a week, where they're saying. That's that's what Ryan Jack would be like. Um we do on tour. Wolf is right um, about that sort of deal for Jack, but I'd add that we would have to have him retire from international football. Care. Rangers cannot in any way, shape or form say to Ryan Jack, can they? We're, we're willing to offer you a new contract as long as you step away from international football. And by the way, you're on mute, which is an, which your professionalism tonight has been shocking. They can't, Martin, but I've said that in the past. I've given you contact as long as they play for Scotland. I'm a big fan of Scotland, as you can see, but it's just because you want him to prolong his club career, but that's like you sign a two-year deal and get injured, and it's not to do with injuries had before, it's just the luck you take, but Ryan Jack, to me, gets a new deal before Lundstrom and Kamara. Lundstrom and Kamara should be sold for scrap metal, and we should buy some other players in their place, but no, you've got to keep Ryan Jack, because I think what Michael will do is next season, he'll, he'll not be starting every game. But the important games you bring him in for and just being about the dressing room and on the bench, he can come on and shut the door or change things because Ryan can go forward, but he can sit deep as well. And Unless you've got something out there that's going to come in and really replace him, 
like for like, then you keep him because he's too good a player just to say, no, we don't want you anymore just because you've only played 25 games this season. We want you to hit 40 so we can't keep you any longer. That's just pointless. You keep Ryan Jack. I mean, I see somebody putting a comments about Scott Yarfield. You keep Scott Yarfield. I know folks don't like me saying that, but you keep Scott Yarfield because we can't change everything in one window. You have to let the players go. Michael's not going to move forward with and the one you can make money on. Scott Arfield will stay for a pattern. Stephen Davis is a different story. Stephen just retires, but you've seen that with Scott Arfield. We're not going to have like that in the squad. It makes runs he makes. He's going to the park and he's a threat straight away. I just think, Kerr, yeah, sorry, Kerr, I just think that with Scott Arfield, and I love Scott Arfield, and, sit and listen, see if Scott Arfield was three, two year younger, three year younger, then he'd been, he'd been my starting lineup. Right, he, he absolutely would. But, you, you, but, 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 but yeah, you, keep, you, you keep Scotty Arfield next season, right? Yeah. Lowry. Um, but Scotty will know he's not a first team. He's, he's, he's valuable, he's invaluable coming off the bench, but in the dressing room. I just think you're taking away places for other, other players that could possibly step in and do a job we, there. We, we, we need a squad of players we can rely on. Unless you get somebody to come in and replace him. Nope, we've been talking about Lowry for 18 months. I know, but what's exactly we've been talking about Larry for the Martin or he's got an attitude problem or he can't play. So you have to maybe that is the case. No, you have to keep talking until you let me talk. Maybe that is the case. Maybe Larry does have an attitude problem, but maybe Adam. Not from I heard not from straight from the horse's mouth, but from the horse's stable, mate. It's got he's got a new year one year deal. So I could be wrong. You can say in a couple of weeks' time. You can say in a couple of weeks' time. Listen, that's fine. Maybe Arfield does have a new deal, right? And, and if Arfield does get a new deal, I'll support him next season because he plays at, my, at the football club that I love, right? My whole point is, what's the point of having a youth, de- a youth department if we're going to keep players like Scotty Arfield and maybe we do keep Stephen Davis, although I very much doubt we do, right? What does that do? You're, you're not going to get your Aaron Lyles coming through. You're not even going to get your Zach Lovelace He's coming well, through. Your coming through. Aaron Lyles coming through, come on. <laughs> I, I, but you know what I mean, though? You know what I mean? But the two months isn't going to stop these guys coming through. Of, of course, it is. You know, you have we have it. evidence in the last it. ten year that keeping a hold of players longer than what we should have has stopped you from coming I'm through. I'm not saying I've, I've mentioned two guys, Ryan Jack and uh, Scotty Arfield. I've not mentioned I'm, anybody else. I'm talking about Scotty Arfield and his current age. We do this all the time. Look what we've done with Alan McGregor. We do this all the time. I we keep players longer than what we have to, and then we don't give the youngsters a chance coming through to but get in. Scotty Arfield, when they, be, when they be getting signed as a first-team player, he'd be lucky if he played a dozen games, but I'll tell you, if he plays a dozen games, I bet he gets about 68 goals. It's invaluable to have in the squad set up just to bring him in. You see him come on in games, which is very tight, and getting as an equaliser or getting as a winner. Unless we've got somebody else that can provide that type of game that he does, but you can't let him go for free because he's he, he only going to break the budget. He, he'll, be, he'll stay for probably whatever he's on or less just to be another season. And 12 months isn't going to make any difference because Michael Bill is going to need another two or three windows because we can't get him down the road to get a new manager in. So we're going to have to give him time. Can I jump in on this? No. <laughs> Let me jump in. <laughs> Let me jump in. So, these are both saying is kind of right in a way, but the difference with McGregor is McGregor was coming into the first team and it was in a position that mattered. So, McGregor, if if he's no doing it, he's letting in goals. If Artfield's no doing it, he sits on the bench. There's a difference there. There's a risk factor that... that he's sitting on the bench. No, he's not, He's yeah, no, but let, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. So, there's no that great a risk factor in bringing him in only financial-wise. So, the other thing that you need to think about is, as well, there's a lot of old heads going to be going. So, what Kel's saying as well, mm-hmm. a lot of old heads going to be going. You need some decent senior pros still there. You don't want to get shot at him and all of a sudden, there's nobody that A, knows the club, B, he's got a club in his blood, C, he's been there and done it, and and knows like likes old forms and stuff like that. So because you don't want to fling hundreds of young boys. But I'm saying you don't want to fling hundreds of young boys in with no old heads to try and guide them. No, that's why Kerr's saying give him another year. If he's he's another year and he's good around around the um around the dressing room, he's he's good camaraderie wise. He's good um 
to come on the last 10, 15 minutes and make, they might only have five, five of their late runs left in them per game. So bring him on the last 10 minutes to make them. If he makes three and scores one goal for three out of three, then I understand what you're saying age-wise, but you need to remember as well, there's a lot of old heads going to be going. So you you need you need somebody that knows the club, knows about about all the bits and bobs behind the scenes. You need somebody that knows how we feel as fans because he's a fan himself. So for me, Kel's probably convinced me that we give him another year. You've got the captain who has just been inducted into the Hall of Fame. You've got Connor Goldson who's been at the club for five years now. Goalie. Right? Regardless, you've got Connor Goldson who's been at the club for five years. If we give Jack a new deal, um, what's, the, what's the famous song about Ryan Jack? Ryan Jack knows our club inside out. Um, somebody put in the comments earlier, um, we need to stop giving older players new contracts. We have to stop have doing it. We have to stop giving new contracts. We have won one title in, what, five years maybe I've been back competitive at this football club? Um, in this league, sorry. What, we've been competitive for four years? Five years maybe, properly? So these guys who know the club, these experienced players, it's not worked, has it? Yeah, but, but what I'm saying is... It, right? We've continued after season yeah. after season, after season, yeah. after season yeah. apart from one, but we won the league. What they do? Yeah. Right, so Conor Goldson and Tavernier, I've been here and experience, mm-hmm. but they're no one of our own. Right. So I, what you're I, going I, to say I, is, if you don't, if you don't, if we sign Ryan Jack, Ryan Jack's one of our own. That's the only person that's going to be left at that club. Right. That's one of our own. Right. So, for me, as I said, Arfield, Arfield can bring something to the last 10, 15 minutes of a game, and he can score goals. He's cool, calm, and collective in front of in front of goal, and he's done it time and time again. All right, times catching up with him, but. I mean, that's like the same as Jermaine Defoe. Jermaine Defoe, what age was he when he was here? Still putting the ball in it. Might not have been good for 90 minutes, but he's still putting the ball in it. He won't he he see, 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 see that run that he did. And then yeah, left what once, what once what he was passed. Is, you, that run that he does, you can't teach that. That late run into the that box, run you can't teach it. That run that he does that you cannot teach, right? Arfield, a Rangers man. McGregor, a Rangers man. Ryan Jack, a Rangers man. One league title. One oh, league title. Hey, you're preaching. You're, 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 you're preaching. I'm talking about when, when people turn around and say, we need to have X amount of these guys at the club who know the club. We need to have this. We need to have that. We have not been successful. Really, you've been talking so why about are we holding on to players who have not been successful? When, we can, when it's not going to cost us any money to get rid of them because their contract's about to run out. And who do you bring in? Martin, we need to have. Martin, we need to have. We, we need. We need to have Rangers men about the club, right? And I'm not saying necessarily those, right? But if you go back to when I when I was a lad, right? John Gray came in as manager in 1978, and the first thing he should have done was get rid of the old heads, and he didn't, right? He kept the guys that he played with. They all got old together. And come the early 80s. The squad was far too old, right? I get what you're saying, right? That's the same sort of situation as we've got now, but to a lesser extent, amount of players, right? But they had a lot of Rangers men about them. They managed to pull them, pull their way back out of that. The problem that we've got, if we see if we get rid of, as, as Mark says, if we only had re sign Ryan Jack, and he's the only, if you like, de facto Rangers man left at the club, right? He, 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 it's an awful job to ask that one guy to tell all the new signings what Rangers are about, because you've got to remember in the last few years, We've lost guys that used to tell the new signings what Rangers was about. Sandy Jarden used to pick them up at the airport and on the drive in say, look, this is what our club is all about. This is what our club means. Unfortunately, Sandy's no longer with us, right? Ditto Walter Smith, ditto Jimmy Bell, right? We don't have these guys, so we need to keep Rangers men about the place, right? And the fact that that Scotty Arfield, you give him, you give him another year's contract. He was on record himself a couple of months ago in an interview saying, look, I've not talked about a contract. One about the end of the season. I'm not important at the moment, right? He understands this. He under he will be difficult to deal with, and he'll cost us a lot of money, and he'll do as a coach. But he'll probably do a better job off the park with the new signings that we bring in. We'll sign him and as try a coach. To keep, keep keep the young kids in line. I mean, if if he's too young, he's too young to become a coach because you still want to play, right? Well, see 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 if but you see could if we you could, you could get good coaching with a week. We still sign him as a player. A week. That's eight grand a week. We're just wasting. 
when we could when we could go and do something else with the money. Oh, oh no. on, I, I give no, up. No, so, so Scotty Arfield comes off the bench in one game next season at Pataudry. Scotty Arfield comes off the bench next season, right? At one game at Pataudry with, with five minutes to go, scores two goals again like he did this year, wins us a game, and we win the league by two points. It's no waste to eight grand a week there, is it? And I know that's, that's all hypothetical. A, that's a ridiculous so argument to make for keeping somebody. Well, all right, okay, so we keep, Scott, we, keep, we keep Scott Arfield next season and he comes off the bench and he scores four goals and we finish second. Was it worth keeping him? It's no, it, you're, not going to fix, yeah, you're not going to fix this team in this window here either. I'm so not you saying to, you will care, but you can start by people whose contracts are coming to an end. You're saying he's, 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 he's on the bench yesterday, but another young player could have been on that bench because they put two keepers on it. Didn't I need two keepers on the bench? So that's not Scotty Arfield's fault. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not blaming Scotty Arfield. I'm just saying that once we've got players of a certain age who are coming towards the end of their contract, thank you for your service. Age does he move on. It's a. It's, it's still your ability, and he's still got some left in the tank. McGregor was not just, enough for us. He not is. enough for us to move forward. He's not going to be a first team starter, which he knows, but he's going to be invaluable in certain games that we can bring in. And for eight grand a week isn't a lot of money. And you uh, then the full window you have to take in stages. We can't do it all at one time. It'll no work. And Mark, the important thing, unlimited resource, or it's not going to work. And the important thing is, Scotty as Kerr says, Scotty Arthur will realise really like not a first starter, and he won't cause the club any problems. You can sign a player and go right. He's not going to be starting games. He can cause you all sorts of grief. He's not going to cause. He's not going to make any waves because he's not starting games. Because you'll understand the situation. I'm sorry, I, I don't know. about the transition. Oh, you're wrong. Stop <laughs> about the transition. One's got to ask you to see my condos, you know what I mean? I tell you, <laughs> yes, I, I tell you what we'll do. We'll, we'll bring back Davey Wee, we'll bring back the coach, we'll oh. give McGregor a new deal because they're all Rangers men. Let's just do that, shall we? But anyway, we have to you're move on. I'm getting wrong, the last man. word. I'm getting the last word. <laughs> We're going to move on. <laughs> Absolutely moving on because all three of you and everybody in the comments who disagrees with me is wrong. And that's all I'm going to say on the map. All right, let's let's move on. So <laughs> uh, we've got another super chat in for James Dalrymple. Thank you very much, James. McGregor, Hollander, Davis, Arfield, Kamara, Manelos, Matondo, get them gone. We need new blood. Yes, we do, James. I'm glad you agree with me. I absolutely agree. Listen, Matondo is a completely different conversation, as is Lundstrom, that we don't have time to go into tonight, unfortunately. Um, but let's just, everybody who watches that back, just put in the comments, Martin, you're right. They three have no idea what they're talking about. Um, oh, Nicholas. Nicholas, that's shocking. Sorry, you're wrong, Martin. Oh, he's not Welsh, Nicholas. Come on. Um, but yeah, okay, so we played Rafe Rovers at the weekend. There's not really too much. You know, I suppose we can get into a bit of game, Mark, to be brutally honest. We got through. It wasn't the best performance. I think we were maybe expecting a bit more after the Hibs performance and, and result. But look, we got through more minutes in the legs. He kept the kind of same team. Obviously, the big talking point was about the atmosphere. And it was about the, the Union Bears. Now, again, I'm not caught up in this whole situation. There's stories coming for left or stories coming for right. Um, so I don't really know what to make of the full situation. But apparently, there was a banner left out um, with regards to something about police. And obviously there was a banner, of course, about Ross Wilson that, that the, the Union Bears showed um, after the game. What do you make of the whole the whole situation? From my point of view, I was at the game and I said to Wolf before we come on, I've never, ever been to Ibrox and seen the atmosphere as flat as that in my life. We did not sing, the Rangers fans as a whole did not sing one song that whole that whole ninety minutes, and and I feel a wee bit sorry. I had a, I had a mate that's that's he's, he's actually he's a he's an Arsenal fan, right? Uh, does a does a follow Scottish football, but his wee girl is um, eight or nine. I think she's maybe nine. Now. Mad mental Rangers fan, mental can tell you that all the Rangers songs. Well, Rangers, I, I managed to get my ticket and play her my ticket, and um, it was her first game. And she was up at half seven in the morning with a Rangers top on, face paint, ready to rock and roll. And she went to the game and the atmosphere was terrible. And I and I felt sorry for her. Do you know that way where I, I just wanted it to be a perfect day for her? Score was good. 
game was no great to watch, but I just thought she'll experience the atmosphere at Ibrox and it'll be a wee bit of sing song for her and she can sing along and dead, absolutely dead, as I said. I don't know the ins and outs of what happened, but when they're not there, the Union Bears, you absolutely miss them. Um, and they, they, they kind of bring that kind of carnival atmosphere and, and they get people singing and they get at least a bit of an atmosphere. Because uh, because they they had the away fans were were pretty loud and they had a, they had a good good amount of bodies there as well. But Ibrox not one song and that's the first time in my life I've ever been to Ibrox and we have not sung one song in the whole of the ninety minutes. Terrible, absolutely terrible. It wasn't really. I mean, the atmosphere is one thing here, right? Because the Union Bears obviously bring they bring a fan. If it wasn't for them, like Mark says, there isn't an atmosphere at Ibrox, right? Um, I think it was it was more so about the banners. Um, again, we don't we don't know what was on them. Um, only Rangers, the Union Bears, and, and the police obviously know um, what was on them. But what did you make of the whole situation with the Union Bears and the club and the banners? And it's just not a great look for the club, no matter what. It's just whether it's the board it's or it's or in the, the paper the day, Martin, the, the one about the police was a picture of a pig in a cop's uniform, saying the numbers on it basically are saying all cops are. As you know, CAAB, C-A-A-B but I mean, this banner's been about Ibrox Fight. It's been about, all ultras fly that banner. And I remember that banner when I was younger. Mark probably remembers that banner when he was younger. I mean, about the, the police. So it's nothing new. I think Rangers maybe use that as an excuse because the other banner saying Ross Wilson's director of failure, which to me isn't offensive. That's just their opinion. That's just correct. Uh, but Rangers have to be careful the way they go down. Yeah, the Union Bears can step out of line at times and people don't like what they do, but the Rangers fans, they offer quite a lot, especially the atmosphere. They do quite a lot with the Tifos and stuff like that. And I think it depends on your age. You might like them, you might not like them. I think they do really well. I was half day saying, yeah, they can, when you stand next to them and you'll get a kid with you, like sometimes isn't it great. And, but I think what they offer on the positive side is really good. And, I think they're going to have, the Rangers are going to have to sit down. I mean, I don't know if Rangers will, but listen, the thing about the police, listen, some people like the police, some people don't. Don't matter what kind of ultra group you're involved in, the police target you. I mean, Wolf was at Easter Road last week. I wasn't, but by all accounts, it wasn't great when you're trying to get into the stadium. And I think it's maybe something that was down to that as well. But when I mean, you go to any games, Rangers, don't get treated. If you go to a game with St. Martin or anybody else, you're fine. You go with Rangers, you get treated like, Cattle basically, you're getting hardly done like sheeting back out and stuff like that. You go as an R fan and our club, you can walk in and out yourself basically to find anybody bothering you. So maybe they'll have to look at that. But I don't think it was done well. I think the Rangers done it in the sly, maybe by what I've read in the papers and listened to other, I mean, I don't know, hand earlier, but I don't know. I think they would have to come out with a statement. I know your union bears released one. Rangers released a statement themselves, doesn't really say much. But it's not great because I think they bring a lot to this Ibrox atmosphere wise. Away games, a lot of the fans usually more sing because you're standing there with your mates and stuff like that. So you maybe sing more with when you're at Ibrox and maybe spread out more. But no, I think it's not a good look for us. It's not a good look for the club. Final say to you, Wolf. <clears throat> My only gripe with the Union Bears is this a- ACAB bit, but that's only because I've got good friends that either are or were police officers. Um, but I know it's an ultra thing, it's not particularly just a Union Bears thing, all the, all the ultras do that. Which is one of the reasons they get a hard time off the, off the, off the polis, because they're calling them all sorts of names, and they kind of they thrive on it. I mean, if they didn't get a hard time from the police, they'd be wondering what they were doing wrong. Because there wouldn't be an ultras group then, because that's what they do. Ultras group noise up, noise up the police, that's just what they do. Um, the atmosphere thing, I agree with Mark, it was terrible on Sunday, absolutely terrible. And if the Union Bears weren't a thing, the atmosphere would come back because people wouldn't be relying on them to start it. But because they weren't there, there was nothing, absolutely nothing apart from the Raith Rovers fans. And it was shocking. I think that, that the Union Bears have put out a statement and a photo with a banner that they've still got. So that obviously wasn't one of the banners confiscated. So that can't be that banner, the Ross Wilson banner, which I agree with. And that can't be the issue because they've still got that and they said that it was materials that was removed from them. Um, I can understand why they'd have been told, look, a banner with a, a, a police, a, a pig in a police uniform isn't really acceptable. They should have been they should have been grown up enough to say, look, okay, fair enough, take that and we'll go. But they're also saying that other match day stuff was taken. We don't know what that is, we'll only get their word for that. 
and then Rangers are saying it's Banner's offensive to the police. Personally, having looked at it all, Rangers have probably used that as a good a good excuse, hoping that they would just walk away from the game and not just dis, not display their anti Rangers or anti board banners because there's been an increase in them. But we'll find out on Saturday because whatever they couldn't show at Ibrox yesterday, I'll guarantee they'll take the mother with them and they'll get them in somehow. They'll get them in because. The positive thing from Rangers' point of view, where that's concerned, is we're not at home again for another three weeks because of the mm-hmm. international break. We're not at home again until first April. Oh, no. mm-hmm. you know, so they'll have to do it somewhere else, and, they'll, and I would imagine it'll happen at Motherwell. So I think I think that whatever banners they were going to display in yesterday, they'll display um, at Motherwell. And if the banners are having a go at the board or having a go at, and they're not, and they're not offensive towards anybody, and the one that that, that they showed in the photo actually the Grand Old Opry. About Ross Wilson, it wasn't offensive. Whether you agree or disagree with the job the man's doing, right? The banner wasn't offensive. It was stating a point of view. Mm-hmm. For me, if the if if the one that was supposed to done about the police was taken away, that's probably overstepping the mark a little bit. Them having that banner, but that's my own personal opinion. As I say, I've got a lot. Of, I've got a lot of friends that, that are coppers. I, I get, I get the whole ultras against the police thing. I do get that because that's what that's what ultras do. Um, but the truth is probably somewhere in the middle because it tends to be with these things. But the club need to box a bit, bit more clever with this because they don't, they don't really want to alienate the union bears. But they have there has to be a bit of give and take from both sides, so they have to kind of get through the But I mean, if you, if you think about, I don't like looking across the city, but they've displayed some loads of banners over the years. That we said, how how has that been accepted by their club? I don't want Rangers supporters of any of any group. To be in the situation, where people saying, "How how did they how did that club think that was acceptable to show that to fly, that? you know, to have that as a banner? Why did why did the club accept? Because every banner and every football ground is supposed to be okayed by the host club by the club, be, be it us, them, Aberdeen, Hearts, Hibs, whoever. So I mean, there's been lots of banners that the Green Brigade have shown that we were. How the fuck did they get that past our security guys? How did they say that was acceptable? I don't want Rangers supporters to be in the position where people are questioning. The decisions of the club, the stuff that's unacceptable. But if it's only banners having a go at individual members of the board and it's not offensive towards them, it's not calling them something. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. The boss, the mayor, you know what I mean? If it's not offensive, then fine. But Aye. it's not no, as scarce it. it's not a good look. It really isn't a good look. No. And if you look back at Union Bears Martin over the last 10 years, probably a lot of what you'll find they'll have the ACA being in somewhere. So it's not the first time yeah. they've done it against the police. So it came out now. I think it's because they've had the board banners, the banners against the board. I think that's why they've done it. Yeah. So that's why it's not a good look for us because they, obviously they've thought, right, we don't want these banners. And listen, it's just my opinion, but Ross Wilson's bulletproof. I don't know the reason for it, but Ross Wilson is bulletproof. I don't know why. We do not have time <laughs> to go out that the night. Um, I'm looking at doing a wee extra show during the week. Um, because obviously it's going to be the international break. We're, we're playing at the weekend, and then I think that's it for a couple of weeks. I've not looked at the schedule completely. Um, but if you do enjoy the content and you want more, um, then do consider joining the Rangers Rabble Patreon. The link for that is in the description. Um, plenty of extra shows on that and plenty of extra shows to come. Uh, Wolf, are we live tonight with a women's show? What's happening with that? We're live tonight in 25 minutes, as long as you send us a link for getting on. Uh, yes, I'll do it. I'll we're do going it to go. We we're, well, we're debating the time. Brian's working, so it'll just be me and Carr. Um, we're originally going to go after the Scottish Cup semi final draw, but we're just going to go before it because nobody's really interested in Falkirk United. So, right, okay, uh, we'll, so we'll go at nine o'clock. Right, so the women's show's on at nine. Um, like I say, loads and loads of extra content over on our Patreon. Um, if I don't manage to get something for during the week, we'll be back on normal YouTube on Friday. Um, can I just say a big thank you to Wolf, Mark and Kerr for joining me, a big thank you to everybody in the comments, um, to, to James for putting in the super chats um, f- give the show a like if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe on the old YouTube, give us a follow and all that, all the links for all the socials is in the description um, have a wonderful rest of your Monday night join us back here at 9 o'clock um, for the Rangers Women's Show thank you for watching, Good night.